the previous lecture we have studied about varactor diode fm modulator which is one of the type of direct fm modulator where instantaneous frequency deviation is directly proportional to amplitude of the modulating signal now in this lecture we will continue with another type of direct fm modulator which is called as reactance modulator now in the earlier uh, um, earlier method we have seen that varactor diode is the one which is going to provide the variable capacitance and hence the variable frequency and this capacitance was dependent on the amplitude of modulating signal and hence we concluded that that amplitude of the modulating signal is going to change the capacitance and therefore the frequency of the varactor diode modulator now in this method we are going to take the help of reactance which is nothing but a capacitive reactance or a inductive reactance to change the frequency rest frequency of the oscillator and therefore deviate the frequency for the fm modulation so providing a voltage variable reactance which is connected across the tank circuit so if you provide a voltage variable reactance to the tank circuit then also the frequency of the tank circuit can be changed so tank circuit is the one which is going to provide the rest frequency for the fm modulator and then according to whatever capacitance or whatever reactance when you change the rest frequency of the oscillator is going to change so the circuit is going to behave like a three terminal reactance and that can be connected across the tank circuit and for this three terminal device we are going to make a help of we are going to take a help of jfet and therefore this particular method is called as jfet reactance modulator so whatever reactance which you want to decide the reactance can be either inductive if you connect inductor or it can be capacitive if you connect capacitor and this particular alternative is there with a simple component change in the circuit so reactance means we are talking about the value of reactance is proportional to the transconductance that is nothing but gm of the device when we talk about jfet we have a transconductance which is gm and this particular transconductance of device can be made proportional or can be made dependent on the gate bias which you are applying so here how the relationship is going to be developed when you are changing the gate bias voltage which is nothing but our modulating signal the transconductance of the device is going to change because of this transconductance the reactance is going to change and this reactance is going to change the frequency of the tank circuit so the three terminal device used for our circuitry is going to be jfet but it is not compulsion to use jfet but similar devices like bjt vacuum tube any other amplifying device can be used as a reactance producing device so the concept here we are going to take the help of reactance to change the rest frequency of the tank circuit now here is the circuit diagram for jfet reactance modulator you can see this particular part of the jfet is nothing but our normal jfet amplifier if you can see there is a r1 r3 which is going to provide the voltage divider biasing rd is the drain resistance rs and cs are the source resistance and the bypass capacitance so here you can see this is the oscillator tank circuit which is nothing but lt and ct and this tank circuit is going to be connected to the variable reactance this is nothing but the variable reactance means jfet and this particular capacitor is going to produce the variable reactance the jfet is going to be controlled by the gate to source voltage which is nothing but our modulating signal input so carrier will be generated by this lt and ct the variable reactance will be generated by the jfet and the capacitor and 
there is a method there are some steps which we need to follow to understand the working of this particular circuit now this particular diagram can be modified if we draw the ac equivalent circuit of this particular diagram then it will be modified in this way so here there is a flip of the diagram in the previous diagram we are looking impedance from this side now in this diagram same diagram is drawn but impedance is from this side so the terminals are marked here gate source and drain there is a capacitor between drain and gate resistor between gate and source and we are looking impedance from point a a that is this is the point where we need to calculate the impedance same diagram you can see between gate and drain capacitor is there here also you can see between gate and drain there is a capacitor between gate and source there is a resistor so ac equivalent circuit can be drawn in this way there is a gate voltage which is marked g there is, there is a current here there is a current here and we are going to calculate impedance looking from terminal a a and some supply voltage v is applied so what are the steps which we are going to follow the voltage v is applied between a a terminal that you can see in the previous diagram and and we are going to measure the impedance z looking from this particular terminal once we are having impedance the resulting current is going to be calculated and the applied voltage divided by current is nothing but the impedance our aim is to calculate impedance from this so whatever voltage we are applying we have to calculate current from there and then divide that by the current so v divided by i applied voltage divided by current is going to give us resistance or impedance but for jfet reactance modulator if we want the impedance that is z to be purely reactive now see what we want here we have connected capacitor here we have said earlier that this particular if we want capacitive reactance then capacitor can be connected if we want inductive reactance then inductor can be connected but what is our main requirement that this particular impedance should be should be because of this particular capacitive reactance or if you are connecting inductor then this should be because of inductive reactance that is what is our requirement because then only we can say that modulating signal is going to change the reactance so if we want a z that is impedance to be purely reactive that is reactance means if we have connected capacitor then capacitive reactance then two requirements has to be followed the bias current ib must be negligible as compared to drain current so you can see in the diagram there is a bias current here this current should be negligible as compared to drain current and the second requirement is drain to gate impedance that is xc must be greater than gate to source impedance so in the diagram two impedances are there between drain and gate capacitive impedance is there between gate and source resistive impedance is there so xc should be very much greater than r this is the second condition and the first condition is bias current should be less than the drain current so with these two condition we have to derive some mathematical steps for the for the working of this particular jfet reactance modulator so now if we see the gate voltage is nothing but i into r now this particular i we are going to find out from that particular branch using voltage divider formula so if we see the diagram again the i is following through this particular branch which is nothing but r divided by r minus reactance of this capacitor is jx so r minus jxc and this is what is written here so ib is in nothing but r divided by r minus v divided by r minus jxc and this particular v is nothing but the voltage which we are applying and that is multiplied by resistance so this i is equal to v divided by r and v is nothing but v divided by r but r is two branch two resistances are connected one is r another is capacitive reactance which is nothing but jxc so this is how this formula has come now the fet drain current is directly given by the formula gm into vg where gm is the transconductance and vg is the above equation we have found out substitute vg from this particular equation and we get this particular equation that is gm into r into v 
divided by R minus Jxc. Therefore, once we got voltage, once we got current, then the impedance will be equal to voltage divided by current. So, it is equal to V divided by this complete term, what we got in the previous equation. So, V divided by Gm into Rv divided by R minus Jxc. If we solve this particular equation, then we will be getting 1 upon Gm into bracket 1 minus Jxc divided by R. So, this is our equation which we get once you solve this equation. And now, the condition, second condition which we talked that when the capacitive reactance is very much greater than R, then the previous formula, previous formula is going to be modified in this way. So, it is equal to minus Jxc divided by Gm into R. And now, the impedance is quite clear. Now, you can see impedance is dependent on Xc and that is what was our requirement. And for that only we mentioned this condition that Xc should be very much greater than R and we got this particular equation. Now, the impedance is purely capacitive and this can be written as Xc divided by Gm into R. Xc is nothing but 1 upon 2 pi Fc. So, we have substituted Xc as 1 upon 2 pi F into Gm into R into C and this Gm into R into C we have written as C equivalent. So, from this particular equation, what you can say, the impedance from the terminal AA, we have found out here, which is nothing but C equivalent, which is equal to Gm into RC, means the FET, which is acting as a reactive element, the impedance looking from this particular terminal, we got impedance looking from this particular terminal, we got Gm, which is transconductance of this particular FET into R into C and that is what is our requirement for the FM modulation. FM modulation. Now, from this particular equation, what, what you can say, C equivalent is equal to Gm into RC. The capacitance depends on the transconductance of the device and therefore, the transconductance can be varied the original whatever value you want to set, you can set for the capacitor. But once the transconductance changes, the C equivalent is also going to change. So, what is the relation now? When the modulating signal is going to change, the transconductance Gm is going to change. Because of that, C equivalent is going to change. And when the C equivalent is going to change, the frequency will change. So, this is the chain. When modulating signal changes, Vg will change. Vg means the gate voltage. Because of that, Gm transconductance will change. Because of that, capacitance will change. Because of that, C equivalent will change. And when the C equivalent is changing, the frequency will change. So, the if you want to find out unit for this Gm into Rc, then R is going to be measured in ohm. Gm is nothing but 1 upon R, which is nothing but measured in Siemens. And therefore, Gm into Rc is nothing but purely capacitive term. And this is what we are saying. So, when the Gm varies with the applied modulating signal, the variable reactance appears across the tank circuit. And this is going to change the Q factor of tank and therefore the output voltage. So, the chain again I am telling when the modulating signal changes, the transconductance Gm changes. Because of that, because of this equation, because of this particular equation, Gm into Rc, the C equivalent is also going to change and because of that, the reactance will also change. But such circuit, whatever this JFET reactance modulator is going to require the amplitude limiter at the output circuit because somewhere the amplitude has to be minimized if it is coming because of the noise. So, that is why this particular circuit is working on the reactance and that is why the name of the circuit is JFET reactance modulator. The chain is when the modulating signal changes, the transconductance GM changes because of the C equivalent changes and because of that, the rest frequency of LC oscillator changes. And that is how it is called as frequency is directly proportional to the amplitude of the modulating signal. Now, in the next lecture, we will see another circuit 
of another block diagram of the direct FM modulator.